Hey guys, I'm here with Boomer Esiason and Craig Carton from Boomer and Carton in the Morning. Let's go back to uh, 2007. You guys stepping into new roles at WFAN, yeah. replacing radio pioneer Don Imus. What was that like? Well, I knew Don. You know, I used to work on his show, and I uh, was very disappointed to see what happened to him. But unfortunately, in this business, when something like that happens, you have to basically seize the opportunity. And Craig and I were lucky enough to be able to, you know, have an audition, to be able to sit in those seats. And we got the job in 2007. Seven years later, man, it's been unbelievable. It's been quite the ride. Now, 2010, you guys make the shift from just doing a radio show to being simulcast on MSG and CBS Sports. Um, what's the difference? Is there, do you prepare more? Is there a different type of preparation? <laughs> it was great for us uh, ego-wise. We got to see ourselves on TV. It was great for the Boomer and Carton brand. And it let people that may not have even heard of us or ever listened to a radio turn on the television, especially after Nick Games, after Ranger Games, and recognize that we were truly destined to be national treasures. And they were kind of getting in at the ground floor of what was going to become a phenomenon. Great. Same. Sam, I, you got to give me more. I'm not falling for that. Hey, hey, there we go. Now, Listen, with a face like this, it's got to be on TV. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Him, not so much, me. <laughs> I felt like, you know, I could bring a different element of my game to the television aspect of what we were trying to get done as a radio duo. And, you know, if you notice, when you watch TV, the camera's more focused on me than they do him, and there's a reason for that. This is the reason for <laughs> that, yes. No comment on that from me. Anyway, <laughs> so this question is more for Boomer. Um, you go, you're noted as being a workhorse, you know? I got, one, I got one for you too, Craig. I got one. I got one. I got one. All right. Yeah, so this one's more for you. Yeah. Um, you're noted as being a workhorse. You frequently do games right. at night and can turn around for that 6 a.m. 6 a.m. start time for your show. How is that? What do you do to prepare for something like that? Well, you know, there is no preparing for it. You just got to make sure you get rest. You take, care of, you take care of your business. You know, you take care of your personal stuff. And then you just go to work, you know, and you just grind through it. And uh, football season is always the toughest part for me. But the one thing that I can tell you, when I actually go do a game, like tomorrow night I'll be in Green Bay at this time, there's nothing like being at a game and calling the game. So the excitement of the game keeps me awake. And then this lunatic behind me the next morning has got to carry me like he does most days. <laughs> How's that? It's true. That was the nicest thing Boomer's ever said about me. So let's go down that path a little bit more, me carrying Boomer. He's 6'4", let's be generous, 230 at this point. <laughs> and I have broad shoulders, big thighs, and I can support it. Um, and that's what we do. You need that. Yeah, enough, of course. <laughs> now, I got one for you, too. Yes. Okay? So, um, you've been all over the place. The reason I bring this up is I know I listened to you when you were in Philly. Right. And um, how is it going from different markets, transferring your markets, transferring your target audience? What do you do to prepare for that? Do you have to change who you are in a way? I mean, I didn't. The target audience is the same. It's you know young men that love sports and talking about girls and drinking and going out. And that's kind of always been the theme of what I've always tried to do. Now, the question is, can you talk about a Philadelphia sports team and have people care about what you want to say? I was blessed that I was able to do that. And that's that you don't change who you are because you got to be who you are. You may change exactly, what yeah. you talk about, but the fundamental baseline of what we do, what I did before that, what I'll do after Boomer's gone, I'm still working with Phil, Sims, or whoever else, <laughs> will be, you know, talking to men. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, you know, people always relate to that. Great. Now, you guys are both philanthropists in your own right. I know you have the Boomer Science Foundation for Cystic Fibrosis, and you have your own TikTok stop for Tourette Syndrome. How do you use who you are to better advance those foundations, advance those causes? Well, you know, for me, it was, it was easy because I was a player in the NFL when my son Gunnar was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. So I saw the power of the NFL way back when. And in 1993, Gunnar and I graced the cover of Sports Illustrated, and he was on my shoulders. And the headline was a quarterback's crusade to fight cystic fibrosis. So I knew how to leverage every single contact, every single company that I did business with as a player had to support what I was doing off the field if they wanted to work with me. And fortunately enough for me, I've stayed in the public eye via TV and radio and everything else. So a lot of those same companies have stayed with me all throughout the years and I've been able to leverage a lot of those contacts to raise the money that we've done. And I think, you know, quite frankly, at the end of the day, you know, that's the most fulfilling part of what I do in my life. And I watched my son grow up. He's 23 years old now. Uh, you know, when he was diagnosed, 19 was the median age for cystic fibrosis children. Now it's over 40. And he's been a big part of that. And that's something that I uh, feel very proud of. Well, listen, I learned how to do it really by watching Boomer's example. And I would say the single greatest thing I've ever done 
was uh, having a camp for kids with Tourette's this past summer and seeing how you changed their lives with something as simple as letting kids get together and just play and be kids. So, uh, you know, I'm blessed that he has the blueprint for how to do it right. And if we can be half as successful as uh, Boomer's Foundation is, then we're way ahead of the game. <laughs> great, great. Thanks. Now, this last question, guys, is more for someone like me. What kind of advice do you guys give to someone who wants to break into the field of broadcast media? Here, here's what I would tell you, and I know he'll tell you the same thing, because there's your, your initial forays into anything that you do, there's going to be some failure there. And you've got to be able to withstand the failure, withstand the adversity, withstand a lot of people standing in your way. There's going to be a lot of potholes and speed bumps and all of those things that you hear older people talk about all the time. And the only thing I can always tell you, if it's in your heart and you love it, you're going to be successful at it. If you have any doubt about what you want to be, then you're not going to be a success. So, you know, not nose to the grindstone, fight the adversity, and never, and I mean never, give up. Yeah, it's simple. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, everyone will tell you that you shouldn't do it, you can't do it. You're going to work for guys who tell you that you suck, and you might. But at some point, if it's what your, your goal in life is to be an on-air personality, you also got to be willing to move. You know, not everyone has to work in New York to be successful. You might have a great career in Cleveland or Tampa or Nebraska. So you got to decide what it is that you want to be and what you want, and then just go forward until anyone tell you that you can't do it. Great. Thanks, guys.